listening to the On Call Empath Show. Hey, this is Raj Mantaj coming at you from the On Call Empath. In today's episode, I'm going to be diving into how to protect ourselves, why empaths attract toxic people. Why I'm choosing this subject is because this is what I hear all the time, empaths uh, do to attract uh, toxic people, and I'm going to explain why and what you can do about it. So definitely stay tuned. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Things that I want to distinguish is, you know, there are toxic people everywhere. It's just it's just a fact of life. There's They're going to be everywhere from your job to people you date, people you live with, Um Not to necessarily say everyone's a narcissist, because I hear that term loosely used a lot, but somebody can be manipulative. They can be on a spectrum where maybe they're not fully narcissistic, but they have tendencies and things like that. Let's look at, let's break down the empaths. Who who are the empaths? Like people like you and me, people that are givers. Um, We like to care for others before ourselves. We're fear of being uh, alone, some of us, um, many times. Uh, we have trouble loving ourselves and putting ourselves first. So what do we do? We look out to other people for validation. Uh, Many times these happen to be toxic people. That's why a lot of times when people come to me, I tell them, you know, why do you keep going back to the same person or the same job or um, the same thing? Because it it feels familiar. Because think about this, if an empath's in a peaceful, tranquil environment, they're going to start having some problems because they're used to that chaos that you're used to someone telling them what to do and things like that. But when you get to a point where you can start spotting these things, it's not going to affect you as much. And that's why it's so important for empaths to understand how to uh, protect their energy. The second part is the toxic people. Who are they? They're the narcissists, the manipulators, the people that um, come into your life and they take, take, take. They know that if they come up to a, a empath like yourself, they are going to be very nice. They're going to smile. They're going to love bomb you. They're going to tell you everything you want to hear. Once your guard is down, completely down and your trust is exposed, that's when they got you. That's when they know that you're not going to leave, whether they've got you um, in a marriage where you can't leave or a job where they know that you can't really go anywhere because um, they're paying you. Um, they're always holding a carrot and that carrot keeps always, we always keep chasing that carrot. Some of them are energy vampires where they will suck the energy out of you. But in the beginning, if you look at it, they are super nice. I deal with this uh, a lot, you know, just from everyday people. Um, and there are some big telltale signs that you need to look for. Signs being like some sometimes besides being super nice, they will come into your life, especially when either you're doing really well or um, let's say you win a million dollars and, you know, you get that everyone trying to... Uh, get a hold of you. That's just an example I'm giving, but let's say you, you, something good happens or um, you come across something that, that, you know, puts you in the spotlight. Uh, all of a sudden there's people coming from all different sides. Sometimes they'll ask you for something. Sometimes they'll just check in and be like, Hey, we haven't spoken in a while. Be careful of that. Uh, I'm not saying everyone. I mean, there's a lot of genuine people that do care, but just watch if somebody just weaves in and out of your life and they're only there when you have something invaluable to offer or let's say you're vulnerable and you're looking for people and then all of a sudden they show up watch out for that narcissists are notorious for that the other one i want to uh, just kind of give you guys a heads up that you might resonate with let me know in the uh, comments below but you'll get a text or uh, a call uh, from somebody that you haven't heard for in a while like like months go by and you're like what made them contact me well i can tell you that sometimes uh, narcissists they will run low on supply so they'll have spinning plates so once they're done damaging one person they'll go to the next to the next once they run out they'll just kind of go back in that loop and you might be on that uh, rotated uh, list so then you'll get that text and in or uh, a call and you'll feel like oh look somebody cares about me or and then we fall right into that same trap and it keeps going in a cycle so keep keep an eye out for people that that all of a sudden gives you a text uh, out of the blue. And I'm not saying every situation is like that. I mean, there are situations where I haven't heard from um, some really good friends. That's that's totally different. But what I am saying is keep your guard up. 
just know that your trust has to be earned. You cannot give it away just for free. It is valuable. It is the key to your happiness. Once you let that trust down, that's when you're vulnerable. That's when you're going to hurt. That's when you're going to get abused, things and that sort of thing. So always don't give your trust out freely to everyone. Make them earn it. The other thing you want to keep in, um, keep in mind is these three things is guilt, fear, obligation. These are the things that uh, especially narcissists are really good at. So if they ask you for something and you hold boundaries, you're going to get pushback. Or let's say somebody wants you to do something and you tell them that, hey, you know, I really wish I can do this. And you put your foot down, all of a sudden, they will either give you the silent treatment or they'll disappear. They'll ghost you. You'll never see them again. I look at that as like the trash took itself out. So if somebody comes in and they ask you for something and then you never see them again, good riddance, just be glad that you didn't give in. But then there'll be other people that will push you and they'll make you feel like uh, the worst uh, human being on the planet just because you have boundaries because you said no. Now, I know that empaths, and this is what I work on with a lot of my clients is saying no. Um, you don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to um, make it about the other person. Make it about yourself. Um, never blame anyone. And I know that you guys heard me say this. Always say, you know, hey, you know, I got a lot on my plate right now. Or, hey, um, I got a lot going on. I would love to circle back with you. When you say things like this, you're kind of taking the burden off of the other person any normal person will understand um, and they will um, not make you fear or guilt or any of that obligations. Um, but the toxic people, they will use all three of those. You, They will make you feel bad. They will make you um, feel punished for saying no and then maybe bring it up later. So keep that in mind and always look out for those buttons because they once someone knows you as a person, let's say after um, let's say you're dating somebody or you lived with somebody uh, a while, your guard is down and they know which buttons to press. They know what to hit and they know how you are going to react. And the last final couple of things I want to leave you guys with is know your limits. Um, know what abuse looks like. So to you, if abuse is someone yelling, if someone um, making you feel gaslighted or they're not, they're cutting you off when you're talking or you know, making you feel um, unworthy. If that is abusive to you, then that's all that matters. That's your definition of it. And if someone crosses that, you have to speak up for yourself and say, this is how I feel. You get to decide as empaths on what you will tolerate and which you, what you won't. The problem is a lot of empaths that are tuning in um, that they may not know any better. They fear that if they do speak up or they do tolerate, it will go away. And I'm here to say it, it will not go away. It would either get worse and the cycle will just continue. So always in the beginning, tell, tell people what your boundaries is, what you're going to tolerate and what you're not, what you're willing to do and what you're not. So once that is set, if they cross that or they push the issue, that's when you have to lay down the law and say, you know what, we our conversation is over here. And I know that takes a lot of confidence. Um, and how do we do that? Where, when, when can we get to a point where we can say, no, you know, just stop what you're doing? Well, here's what I'm going to leave you with self love. That's what's going to get you to start going in that direction. And that's what I do with a lot of clients that I coach is I get them to have more confidence, build that uh, protection around them. So that way, if any toxic person or narcissist or whoever comes towards them, they know that they are defending themselves. But more importantly, I give them the... Um, the visualization, let's say that you have a daughter or, or a son and somebody comes up and slaps them like right in, right in the open. Most people will not tolerate that. Most people will stand up for their kids. So I'm asking the empaths like, well, then why wouldn't you stand up for yourself? You have to have that same respect, that same, same conviction that you have about protecting your kids as you do as yourself. And once you can do that, once you can put yourself in a place where you don't, 
you're going to protect yourself as you would as your as your child that's when things start to change and people you start to repel these toxic people because once you do that you're going to start getting more positive people in your life all these toxic people are going to go to the next person that's going to allow this shit you're not going to allow it, but it takes practice. It's not easy. And there, there are certain things you have to keep in mind is, is not to react, you know, how to respond to certain comments. Um, look for cues when somebody's being ultimately overly nice and you haven't um, even met them for the first time, or maybe you've known this person, but they only come in once and twice in, in your life. Ask yourself, you know, what is it? What is their motive? What do they really want? Why are they being nice? And these are the questions that as an empath, this has to be like your first line of defense, because if, if you don't have this, these, um, if you don't ask yourself these questions, they're going to go right through your energy level and then suck you right dry. And, and, and so that's what I want to get across in this, uh, this podcast episode is that it is possible if you feel like you're lonely and you don't have any confidence and you have a hard time saying no and keeping boundaries, you can start by loving yourself and how you do that. There's many ways to do that. It's positive self-talk. It's doing the work, writing in your journal, learning about yourself. And when I do, when I tell empaths to love themselves, they're not really sure like how to go about doing that. And so that's what I work on with uh, a lot of my clients. And one thing I do want to say in this last note is I see a lot of people going through YouTube videos, watching videos on narcissists, watching videos on toxic um, people, watching this video, for example. Um, I just want to leave you with, you can watch all the, the content, you can read and have a PhD and you know all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, none of that's going to matter unless you love yourself and you put yourself first and you do action. You actually put it into action by doing um, the things that you need to do. You love yourself, set boundaries, saying no, um, taking care of yourself, putting yourself first. It's kind of like that that analogy with your child. You want er, you want to protect that that child, and so um, at the end of the day, you know exactly what to look for. And I, I just want you to ask these questions. You know if they're being nice and you've known them and you built that trust, then there's nothing that to worry about. But if it's somebody that you kind of just met or you barely know, you got to ask these questions. So I hope that helps you out. So with that said, stay tuned for the next episode. I got a lot more guests coming on this uh, season. Also, if you need some coaching, I am giving a free session uh, to anyone that needs it. Let me know in the comments below your experiences and how you protect yourself. I would love to, uh, I'd love to know what you guys do, especially the empaths, even HSPs, they have, go through the similar things where they attract um, a lot of negative people and toxic people. What do you guys do to, uh, to protect yourself? Always keep moving forward and we are out. You're listening to the On Call Empath.